Okay, hi everyone. Alexa here from the blog, thedovalhomestead.com. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make homemade baby shampoo. It's very easy, just a few simple ingredients, all natural, and something you can feel comfortable putting on your newborn to toddler for a nice DIY, cost-effective shampoo. apologize for this lighting. We are in my bathroom, our guest bathroom right now, and there's a big sunlight right here, and I don't really know how else to get around it, so. Also, my baby's napping right now, so that is how I'm filming this video. So I'm talking a little bit quiet because she's actually in the room next door. So I am very happy to be filming this video because we have been out of town for a little while, and I have cut my videos on YouTube down to every other week instead of every week because we were out of town, but before that, my baby was just not napping, and I was struggling to find even 20 minutes of time during the day to do anything without her. And so that phase, I hope, is ending now. She seems to be doing better. She is now sleeping in her crib, which before she was in our bed, and so we just had to kind of go through that transition. But it took me like a month, and I just did not have free time. So hopefully this will be the last time that I skip a week on a video, and we get back to the regular scheduled programming. So like I said, we just got home from a trip, and we are out of baby shampoo. I made this shampoo probably about eight to 10 months ago when I started bathing my baby. So she is one year old now, and when she was a newborn, I didn't really bathe her very much. Once she got maybe two to four months old and finally had some hair, I thought we better put some shampoo together. I have shown you how to make DIY bath tea bags. I've also shown you how to make homemade baby wipe solution. And so this is just another one of those things that I love to make because I can know and trust the ingredients. I was doing some research when I was writing up a blog post for this and I found some really scary articles about Johnson & Johnson, the maker behind baby powder and so many other products are labeled, you know, gentle for baby, baby wash, that kind of thing. And they have actually something like, I think it was 30,000 or more lawsuits pending for some ingredients that are listed in just their baby powder. And for so many people, Johnson & Johnson baby powder is such a staple in their house. Many ingredients used in baby products today are actually potentially very harmful. In fact, the United States FDA has many ingredients that are approved in food and products that are not approved in many countries around the world. For example, some food colorings like Red 40 and Yellow 6. Many European countries don't allow those ingredients, but the US does. The India National Commission for the Protection of Child Rights ordered Johnson & Johnson to recall a batch of their baby shampoo because they claimed it contained unsafe levels amount of formaldehyde. Two years ago, Johnson & Johnson stopped manufacturing baby powders that contained an ingredient called talc because it was discovered that talc contained asbestos, a cancer-causing agent. Again, talc is an ingredient that is banned in Europe but is safe in the United States. So the more I research this topic, the more I become skeptical about the things that our government says are safe. And aside from all of that, I know for a fact that companies' number one goal is profit. And when they advertise things like natural or baby friendly, they are doing that to get you to buy the product, not necessarily because the ingredients are actually that way. So you have to be very careful with what you're buying. Making your own products is very easy if you have a few staple ingredients. So if you have these on hand, you can make numerous things, not just baby shampoo, and it will drive the cost down every time you make it because you're buying things in bulk, like this large jug of Castile soap, and I can use this all around my house. So I just feel so much more comfortable making my own products, especially for a baby who cannot handle some toxic ingredients that might be in a store-bought product. I was even gifted a baby shampoo from a friend that claimed it was all natural and everything, and I looked at the back and there were fragrances in it. Fragrances are another ingredient that can disrupt hormones, cause skin irritations. They are just generally not a natural ingredient that uh, should be on your baby in my opinion. So all of that to say that's why I'm making this baby shampoo and I hope that you find this helpful and hopefully you already have some of these ingredients around your house. So what I like about this baby shampoo is I pour it into this pump jar with a pump on it and it's very easy to squirt out and this holds quite a bit. So this lasted me probably eight or ten months. Now you want to use one pump for a baby with not a whole lot of hair and then two pumps for when they get more hair. Okay, so you're gonna start with one quarter cup Castile soap. Castile soap is a plant-derived soap that's gentle on the skin, but it has powerful cleaning properties. 
It's made of olive oil, coconut oil, and sunflower oil. It's biodegradable, non-GMO, and non-toxic, so it's safe to use around your house and on your baby. One eighth of a cup vegetable glycerin. Vegetable glycerin is what allows this to be more of a foaming baby wash. It's derived from coconut and it's used in, as a foaming agent in homemade products such as baby wash or shampoo. It provides a high level of moisturization and hydration, making it an ideal choice for homemade skin and body care, especially when your baby's skin might be dry from all of the growing or they might have some cradle cap on their skin. This will be good for that. This vegetable glycerin I'm using is 100% organic and sourced from coconut and it's food grade, so it's safe to use around babies. One eighth of a cup aloe vera gel. Aloe vera is one of my favorite ingredients to use for my baby. I also use it in my homemade baby wipe solution. It's so soothing to the skin. It's a natural wound healer and it contains antioxidants and antibacterial properties. This one that I'm using is certified organic. It contains a natural thickener, so it absorbs quickly with no sticky residue and two to three drops each of myrrh, Hawaiian sandalwood, and frankincense. Hawaiian sandalwood might be one of my favorite essential oils. It smells so good. It's often used for meditation because of its calming effect. It's very good at soothing the skin. It's anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial. It's used for acne, eczema, warts, and other skin issues. That's why I like to use it in this shampoo because it's good for baby's cradle cap. Frankincense is another really good one. It's good for the skin. It has anti-inflammatory properties. It also supports the immune system. And a study showed that it helped in the aid of killing tumor cells. And that study is also linked in the blog post. I like to do my research on these oils and find out what they have proven because there's really not a lot in our society today about natural medicine, so I try to become as self-educated as possible. You do want to be careful because essential oils are very powerful. You want to use a very small amount of essential oils and always dilute it. If you're worried about this, you can talk to your doctor before doing it or test a little bit on your baby's skin and make sure there's no reaction. Of course, my disclosure is that I'm not a medical professional, so always talk to your baby's doctor before you put anything on their skin. And then you're going to fill the rest up with water. And put your lid on. And you have homemade baby shampoo. I will leave a link to where I get this container online. It's from Amazon. It's great for making shampoo or even hand soap. We have a few of these on hand at all times just so that I can make things like this when I need to. Before using, I like to give it a little shake to mix up the ingredients. And then I just use one pump when the baby didn't have a lot of hair and two pumps for more hair. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me in making homemade baby shampoo. I hope you found this helpful. If you want to print the recipe out, head over to the blog post. There's a free printable there. I also have a free label that you can stick right onto the bottle so you don't forget what's in it or the ingredients. So head on over to the blog post and get that for yourself as well. All right, well, if you're brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. Every week, most of the time, I post a new farm-to-table recipe and homemade natural living. Thank you so much for stopping by the Duval Homestead.